Hey, I have awesome, awesome video. This is my favorite video clip right now. You remember the movie Wall Street, Lewis? Of course, mm -hmm. with uh, with, with uh, who? <laughs> remind me who was in it? Fox. Uh, yes, right. And uh, Asher Edelman is an investor who was one of the inspirations for the character Gordon Gecko, a corporate raider, a vulture capitalist in the movie Wall Street. Asher Edelman showed up on CNBC uh, over the last week, and he came out and he said, "Hey, you know what?" We're in a recession right now for everybody but those who are very, very rich. We're, in, we're effectively in a recession. I'm going to play the first part for you. This is absolutely fantastic. Check out the reaction from the panel there when they ask, well, according to who are we in a recession? Sure to have you on the program. Thank you very much. Nice to be here. You say that we are currently in a recession. Every Fed official who speaks to us tells us we are not in a recession. What are they missing? I think it's pretty straightforward. The average American has not had an increase in pay in 15 years, but things have cost, cost more in the marketplaces. He has been in a recession for 15 years. Nothing's changed for him. Uh, up at the top, we're not in a recession. But 80% of the Americans have been in a recession for at least 15 years. So how does that uh, translate into investing, into the stock market? Is it that it's a recession that nobody seems like nobody realizes we are in one, and certainly nobody realizes we've been in one for 15 years? Who is your nobody? I think the broader investing public. If you uphold anybody on the street or anybody on this desk well, right it here. Like, it sounds like you're talking more about financial oppression than you are an economic decline. I mean, I, I get the fact that a lot of people aren't doing as well because structurally society isn't rewarding them maybe where they should. I don't, I'm not going to get into that. That's a social the, issue. I'm talking about money and economics. People can buy less for what they have now than they could 15 years ago. In their lives, that's a recession. I love it, Lewis. And they just seem so confused. Like, who do, who's noticing this recession you claim exists? I mean, nobody's noticing it. Well, what do you mean by nobody? I mean, none of the really well paid anchors at CNBC who basically just tout supply side economics. Yeah. None of us have noticed a recession or anyone walking around with suits in the financial district <laughs> right. down below here. If you go out and talk to the traders at the at the stock exchange, they're not noticing the recession. I mean, who else is there really? I, this is absolutely fantastic. And this is where it really gets really, really good. Then they go into the presidential race. And who does the vulture capitalist on who Gordon Gecko is based support based on who would be best for the average person? Take a look. Let's move on to the presidential elections. I'm curious. We're asking everybody, essentially, who you think the best candidate for the economy would be. Bernie Sanders. Without a doubt. Why is that? What, no what question. Policies? Well, I think it's quite simple again. If you look at something <laughs> called velocity of money, you guys know what that is, I presume. <laughs> that means how much gets spent and turns around. When you have the top 1% getting money, they spend 5 10% of what they earn. When you have the lower end of the economy getting money, they spend 100 or 110% of what they earn. As you've had a transfer of wealth to the top and a transfer of income to the top, you have a shrinking uh, consumer base, basically, and you have a shrinking velocity of money. Mm -hmm. Bernie is the only person out there who I think is talking <laughs> at all about both fiscal stimulation and banking rules that will get the banks to begin to generate lending again as opposed to speculation. I love it. And velocity of money, of course, it's related to marginal propensity to consume. The lower you are uh, in terms of uh, the, the sort of wealth spectrum, the more likely you are to buy stuff with any additional money you get. It's related to the economic multiplier. This is why food stamps are so stimulative. We've been talking about this basic principle for years and years. Every supply sider I interview is perplexed by it. I don't know that Asher Edelman got through to anybody. But just watching the shock on the faces of these CNBC anchors was really something. It is. And I posted this video to Facebook and yeah. I, I just wanted to share it because it's it is kind of shocking even for us to hear someone who comes from a position like his to say this. But if you agree with us on economics, it makes perfect sense. Asher Edelman, quite a guy. And uh, uh, look up his history. I mean, really a guy with an interesting background. And, and I know this is crazy, but he's not actually that rich in the grand scheme of things. He, he's, his net worth is about 25 million, according to our research, which is, of course, orders of magnitude more than the average net worth in the United States. But compared to some of the uber, uber rich, uh, he is relatively low on the rich guy scale, which is also sort of an interesting thing. I'm on Twitter at D Pacman. Lewis is on Twitter at Lewis Motomedy. We'll take a quick break. Warby Parker is offering a free five day home try on to give you the opportunity to check out their glasses. I personally wear Warby Parker glasses when I'm not wearing my contact lenses. 
And I also started with one of these free at-home try-ons of five pairs of glasses. You can get your free home try-on and support The David Pakman Show at warbyparkertrial.com slash TDPS. I don't really like going into glasses stores and trying on glasses while the salesperson sort of hovers over me. And I like more than 30 seconds to actually figure out whether I like the glasses. So with the Warby Parker home try-on, I was able to pick five pairs that I liked, put them on in the comfort of my own home, pick the one I like the most, and then Warby Parker put my prescription lenses in there for me. A lot of people don't know that the eyeglass industry is controlled by just a few big corporations that keep prices very high, like $300 for prescription glasses high, which is just insane. Warby Parker glasses start at $95. That's what mine cost. And for every pair of glasses sold, Warby Parker distributes a pair of glasses to someone in need. You can try five pairs and see what you like. Check out the at-home trial and support our show by going to warbyparker.com slash TDPS. It costs nothing. 